The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Say, Ethelbert, did you hear about the latest crime wave? What crime wave, Casey? It's a series of crimes that occur regularly every week. What's so unusual about that? Well, for one thing, every one of these crimes is solved in exactly half an hour. Gosh, do they have any idea who's responsible? Why, sure. It's Crime Photographer, brought to you each week by Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey Crime Photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Acquitted. Late afternoon, a sparsely filled courtroom. Opposing attorneys, witnesses, spectators, and the accused stiffen to attention as the jurors file into their box. Then the foreman is summoned to state the verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. I told you it'd be that way, Annie. Well, you didn't have to tell me, Casey. I knew. Quiet, please. Quiet. No, Judge Lucas will deliver a few remarks. He always does. Well, Quiet. I hope they're very few, because I want to get to a telephone. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this court thanks you for bringing in a verdict that is altogether in accord with the evidence that was presented to you. And similar thanks is accorded to the defendant's attorney, Mr. Freeman, for his presentation of his case. Thank you, Your Honor. Nuts. Freeman's a louse. You can say that again. But for the police officer who has figured so prominently in this case, the court has nothing but censure. Now it comes, Annie. Mm -hmm. Detective Ryan... Evidence has shown that you deliberately and with malicious intent committed an unprovoked assault upon the defendant for the purpose of obtaining the confession that he here repudiated. That isn't so, Your Honor. That dirty crook Wadlow told you nothing but lies. Quiet! How can a man be quiet when he's blamed for doing his duty? That guy tried to escape and I put him under arrest. He fought me in a house of dawn. Bailiff, reserve order in this court. Mike Rand was sure okay. to blow his top under that one, Annie. And okay, I'll be quiet. And I beg the court's pardon. Detective Ryan, it is in the power of the court to impose a penalty upon you for your disgraceful outburst. But in view of your apology, I refrain. I shall, however, recommend to your superiors that you be called to answer for your conduct in all phases of this case. Prisoner at the bar, Leonard Waldo, you stand acquitted, and are hereby discharged from custody. Thanks, Judge. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, you are discharged. Court adjourned. Well, now I get to a phone and give the city desk the story. Yeah, I'll stay here, Annie, and get some pictures. Okay, I'll meet you in the car. Okay, honey. Uh, Mr. Allison. Yes? Uh, thanks. Just wanted you to turn around so I could get a shot of I got it all right, thank you. What did you want a picture of me? Uh, you were the complaining witness in this case. Your property was stolen. And since this man's been acquitted, I never expect to see that property again. You fail to identify him as a thief. I couldn't be positive he was the man I surprised in front of my safe that night. And one must be positive. But you originally identified him as the guy... I said then he strongly resembled the burglar, as I said it again today. I never said more than that. I see. Excuse me, I want to say a word to the assistant district attorney, Mr. Freeman. Yes, sure. Hey, Freeman. Hello, Casey. You and your lucky client look happy for the camera? Okay. Watch the birdie, Lenny. Yeah, sure. Thanks, I got you. But uh, what did you mean by lucky client? This lad was innocent as a newborn babe. Yeah. You just heard the jury and the judge agree on that, Casey. Sure, Lenny, I heard. I still say you're quite a lawyer, Freeman. <laughs> say, look at here. Newspaper guys are naturally cynical, Lenny, and Casey's right about you having a good lawyer. Yeah, you're a good one, all right. Huh? 
Oh, Officer Ryan. Yeah. Hello, Mike. Hello, Casey. I hope there's no hard feelings, Mike. You know there's nothing personal. What I did to you on the witness stand, it was all part of the game. Sure. You lawyers can make an honest witness look like a fool and a liar. Take it easy, Mike. I am taking it easy, Casey. I'm not going to blow my top again. I'm just telling this slick mouthpiece I think he's a crooked louse. Look here, Shut Ryan. up, Freeman. As for you, Waldo, you know I didn't beat you up to get a confession out of you. You started to play rough and I took care of you. I should let you have it right now, but, well, I won't. That's all. So long, Casey. So long, Mike. You gonna let him get away with that, Freeman? No. Hey, Ryan. Hey, you two guys aren't Keep gonna... out of this, Casey. Hey, Flatfoot. What? We're gonna tell you a few things, copper. Oh, yeah? Hey, Freeman, you're supposed to have some brains. Big Mike Ryan is dynamite when he gets started. Ryan, my client and I were going to let you off easy. But since you've decided to be nasty, we'll see that you face not only departmental charges for manhandling a prisoner, we'll slap a civil suit on you for damages resulting from assault and battery. You're not going to do that, Freeman. That's what you think, you big ape. No dirty thief like you calls me that. Mike, Mike. Let go of me, Casey. Hey, I'm going to run him. I'll kill him. Take the Allison, fool. Help me hold this chump. He's a slug. Uh, we've got him. Hold him, Mike. Hold him, will you? These birds were only trying to make you lose your head. Don't play into their hands. Okay, take your hands off me. Promise not to sock them. What's going on here? Huh? Oh, hello, Sergeant. Nothing's going on, nothing at all. Uh, Casey's made a slight understatement, Sergeant. Officer Ryan just tried to attack my client and It me. was a deliberately provoked attack, Sergeant. I was leaving the room holding my temper, Sergeant, when these two okay, came... Okay, Mike, I'll make no report on it to add to your other troubles. Other troubles? Yeah. Commissioner sent me here for you. You had to report at his office right away. Oh, well, that means... Judge that... Lucas just talked to him over the phone. You can guess what it means. I'm sorry, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay, Sarge. Let's go. So long, ex-copper. You're going to miss that badge of yours. Listen, Waldo and Freeman. I'm going to get you two for this. Just remember that. Gentlemen, you're witnesses to that man's threat. Yeah, Freeman. And Mike Ryan's not the only one who'd like to take a poke at you two. <laughs> Walter, serve two more bottles of beer to these gentlemen. And uh, bring up some more lemons. Well, this is the lemon seasoning. Again. Now, to get back to what you and Casey was relating to me, Miss Williams, uh, what did the commissioner do to Big Mike Ryan? Suspended him. Yeah? Yeah, and it's lousy. Mike's a swell cop, and he's got a swell record, too. You don't think he beat up that Lenny Waldo in order to get a confession, huh, Casey? Definitely not. In my book, the whole thing happened just like Mike said it did. I forgot the beginning of this case. It happened over six months ago, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Shortly after Christmas, Ethelbert. This Robert Alliston, who's a wholesale diamond merchant, went to his office after hours with a friend and walked in on a safe cracker. Well, the burglar blackjacked him and made a getaway with around $100,000 worth of precious stones. Now, Alliston's friend got socked before he had a good look at the guy, but Alliston himself described him to the cops, and the description fit Lenny Waldo, who, of course, has a long record for safe cracking. Mike Ryan was one of the dicks assigned to look for Waldo. He found him. Waldo tried to make a break, and there was quite a fight. Waldo came off second best. When Waldo yelled uncle, he spotted a confession along with it. Oh, which he later affirmed in writing. Yeah, but before the trial, Dan Freeman, his lawyer, smuggled a camera into the jail and got some pictures of Waldo's bruises, showed the pictures in court. And then Waldo repudiated his confession, saying that he'd been beaten into it by Officer Ryan. Well, Alliston, who was the only person who could definitely place Waldo at the scene of the burglary, wouldn't make a positive identification. He's one of those... Ultra careful people. Anyway, the whole case against Waldo blew up when Freeman got Mike Ryan's goat during cross examination. And Ryan looked like the criminal instead of Waldo. And as there was no direct evidence, none of the stolen gems had been found in the man's possession. Now the insurance companies are holding the bag. And if they try to renege, it won't hurt Alliston much. He inherited a couple of million about a month after the robbery. He did? Yeah. A rich uncle of his died. Gee, I've always wished for a rich uncle in bad health. <laughs> so have we all. Well, now the only one with any trouble on his hands is poor Mike Ryan, huh? Casey, Freeman and Waldo threatened to press charges against Ryan, 
and to institute civil action for damages. Oh, that was just bluff, Annie. Well, they were pretty sore at him from what you've told me. And he was pretty sore at them. I'm not sure that... Oh, that... excuse me, there's a bar from... Annie, look, I'll no, no, bet you cafe. that Ethel Mike will be speaking. back on duty in a week. And that yeah. Waldo and Freeman. It's for you, will Casey, go. your city desk. Huh? Oh, see, uh, give it to me. Hmm. Hello, Burke. Yes, I'm here again. Yeah. What? Gliber's Cafe. Yeah, sure, I know where the place is. What? Wait a minute. Say that again, Burke. Okay, we'll get right over there. Hey, what is it, Casey? Dan Freeman and Lenny Waldo have just been shot to death, Annie. Shot? And Mike Ryan's accused of the murders. <laughs> Tomorrow, all over America, cool, frosty drinks will be poured from radiant sunburst crystal pitchers into sparkling sunburst crystal tumblers. The radiance of this brand new kind of anchor hawking crystal can be compared to a finely cut diamond, its beauty to the rarest hand-cut crystal. Yet sunburst prices are incredibly low. Now here are just a few examples. Sunburst crystal glasses for fruit juice are only five cents a piece. Table tumblers, two for 15. Big oversized glasses for ice drinks, only 10 cents each. And to top it all, a magnificent two-quart pitcher costs only 50 cents. Now, you'd expect to find crystal as beautiful as this only in a jewelry store. But as a matter of fact, all next week, the windows and counters of the retail stores of America will feature brilliant displays of sunburst crystal, priced from five cents up, slightly more in distant cities. Now, you'll recognize Sunburst immediately by its unique Sunburst design. So look for it, ask for it. Sunburst Crystal, a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Casey, it isn't pleasant for me to tag another cop for murder, but now this job spells Mike Ryan all the way. What have we got on him, Logan? Yeah, tell us what happened, Captain. Well, Gliber's Cafe here was a regular hangout for Freeman, Miss Williams. After he won a case, he usually brought his client here for a celebration. Yeah, I know that. So did Ryan know it, Casey. It was a cinch he'd find Freeman and Waldo together here tonight at Freeman's regular table was in line with that window there. You mean the two men were shot from that window? Yeah. Opens in a dark alley. Ryan took two quick shots apiece at Freeman and Waldo, scored clean hits, and then made his getaway through the alley. Did anyone see Ryan do the shooting? No, but he left convincing proof that he was the killer. Proof? Look at this. Oh, gold fountain pen. With his name engraved on it. Mm -hmm. Inspector Mulcahy gave it to Ryan a couple of years ago for being a Top-notch cop. Where did you find it, Logan? In the alley, a few yards from that window, where it had fallen from Ryan's pocket. Someone may have lifted the thing from Mike and planted it there, you know. I'd like to believe that, Casey, but... Well, Ryan was seen in this neighborhood tonight. He was? Only a few blocks from here, Miss Williams. That guy lives on the other side of town, and he was under suspension, so no duty could have brought him here. Well, it's hard to picture Mike sneaking through a dark alley like a rat shooting two guys in cold blood. He was awful sore, Casey, and he has a rotten temper. Well, it's an open, quick temper. It gets red hot in a few seconds and cools off almost as fast. Look, you or I or nobody knows how fast a temper cools off. Your guys found him yet? No, oh, but they'll be bringing him in pretty soon. I'm going back to headquarters and wait till they do. You mind if I stick along with you? Well, come on. Thanks. Annie, take these exposed films back to the office for me, will you, honey? Mm -hmm. Yes, Casey. I'll meet you there later. Now I want to hear what Mike Ryan has to say. I swear I didn't do it, Captain. I didn't know a thing about it till I went home and found Sergeant Flanagan waiting there for me. What were you doing near Gliber's Cafe just before the shooting, Ryan? I explained that to the sergeant, sir. I want to hear it. Well, okay. I got a phone call at my home tonight from a guy who wouldn't give his name. He said he'd give me a tip on the Weinstein robbery last week if I'd meet him on Elder Street between Lexington and Grove at half past ten. Now, you've gotten that kind of calls from crooks yourself, Captain. And so have you, Casey. You know that, so, Logan? Keep out of this, Casey. Okay, sorry. 
So you were in the neighborhood, Ryan, only because you received this mysterious summons to be there, huh? Yes, and that's God's truth. Of course, your man showed up. Well, no, he didn't. I waited a while and then started back home. By way of the alley behind Gleiber's Cafe. I huh? didn't go near Gleiber's. I walked in the other direction. You walked home, huh? Yes, a good part of the way, because... Of course, I wanted to think. Now think up the story you've just told me. Well, what do you got to say about this fountain pen we found? Well, I lost it somewhere today. I don't know where. Uh, Captain, I've been framed for this job. You've heard that excuse from plenty of crooks yourself, haven't you? Yes, and sometimes it was true. One time in a thousand. Oh, yes, I know that. Uh, Captain, the boys gave me the dermal nitrate test right after they brought me in. It proved I haven't fired a gun for days. You know all the tricks, Ryan. You could beat the nitrate test. Well, yes, that's so. Well, where do we go from here, sir? I'm not going to confess to something I didn't do. And you know I won't let my man beat a confession out of you as you beat one out of Waldo. What's that? You heard me. I think Waldo told the truth in court. I think your story about his attempted escape was phony. And you're a cockeyed fool. I think you're a liar, Ryan, and a cold-blooded murderer. No man talks to me like that. Let me go, boy. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. You want to kill again, don't you? Kill, just as you did tonight. When something starts that temper of yours boiling, all you can think of is murder, isn't it? Uh, I get it. And I fell for your act, Captain. I know I've got a tempter, but... I'm not a murderer. Take him away, boys. Let him sit in a cell a while and think. Maybe he'll get wise to himself and tell the truth. Come on, Ryan. All right. Casey. Yeah, Mike? You're not a cop with a cop's way of thinking. Do you believe me? I think I do, Mike. Thanks. Let's go to that cell, boys. You... You really believe his story, Casey? Yeah. I think you do too, Logan. You were just putting on an act. Uh, I want to believe it, because he's another cop. Which makes me unreliable. Mike's been a tough cop, and a lot of crooks hate his insides. The quarrel in that courtroom today was pretty public. The news travels fast. Yeah. Mike's threats did provide a swell setup for a frame. A perfect one for anyone who wanted Freeman and Waldo out of the way. Plenty of guys headed in for those two rats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's nearly midnight, Logan. I gotta get back to the office and check out and take Annie home. Yeah. After an hour of the blue note. <laughs> sure, that usually finishes up our day for us. Say, the only time you ever get a bright idea is when you're leaning against that bar. Will you stay there for a couple of hours tonight? Hmm? Mike Ryan needs a break. Logan, if he's on the level, as we're trying to believe, he'll get his break. Right guys do. Yeah, in books written for children. Anyone ever tell you you had a grown-up brain? Well, I had sense enough not to become a lousy press photographer. So you became a lousy cop. Get out of here. I want to think. What with? Uh, nuts to you. So long, Mug. So long, Sap. And nuts to you. figure out who stole Ryan's fountain pen, Casey. Yeah, sure, that's the key to the whole thing, Annie. If the guy's been framed. But some dip might have let it slip out of his pocket. He may have lost it on the street. Somebody picked it up. Yeah. I'm... As soon as you get that ice chop, Joe, go down the cellar and bring up some more club soda. You hear me, Joe? Okay, Applebite. Oh, gee, I'm tired, Casey. I just had to mix up highballs for a party of eight. Party of eight is a pretty young person to be drinking highballs. Yeah. Huh? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> oh, I get it. It's not bad. Not bad at all. It was terrible. <laughs> not that was bad, it? Annie. No. Yeah, I guess you're right, Miss Wales. <laughs> You two still puzzling over that murder? Oh, I'm getting nowhere, Ethelbert. Say, ever since you come in, I meant to tell you and forgot. I heard something funny tonight about them guys who was killed. What? I got talking here at the bar with a young fella I know. He's studying to be a lawyer. Bunny Shell, his name is. And he said he sat in on Waldo's trial for a while today, you know, to kind of pick up pointers. So? Well, so he said he was very much surprised that Dan Freeman didn't tell the jury about Waldo's alibi. Well, he would have if the rat had had an alibi. 
This young fella said he had a dandy. Oh, now, how did he know? Well, he'd seen Waldo a lot of times at a bowling alley where he goes to, and he knows Waldo was there at the time he was supposed to be robbing that safe because Waldo picked a fight with him. Almost. Hey, wait a minute. He, he can't be sure. Then. Sure he's sure. Well, okay, a good alibi would have gotten Waldo out of jail right after he got in. The guy Ethelbert talked to is nuts, Annie. No, he ain't, He's always Casey. talking to nuts. No, he's a nice fella. Smart, too. He said he got so curious about why no alibi was mentioned at the trial, he went up to the bowling alley and checked. <laughs> Guys who worked there told him Dan Freeman had come around there after Waldo was arrested and got him to sign papers about him being there at such and such a time. But they didn't hear from him again. Did he tell you what bowling alley it was? Yeah, the uh, Acme on 11th Street. Acme, all right. Annie, come on. We're going to do some checking there. Hmm? Why? It may be Ryan's break. Oh, I don't get it. Annie, if this story's true, the whole thing is simple. I'll know who really killed those two guys tonight and why. Sit down, Mr. Casey. Thanks, Mr. Alliston. To what am I indebted for this visit at this hour in the morning? Are we uh, alone here? My servants are all in bed, if that's what you mean. Why do you ask? I think you'd prefer to hear what I have to say alone. I have no idea of your meaning. The meaning is, uh, money. Money? Mm-hmm. Yours. A lot of it. Talk straight, Mr. Casey. Okay. I know that you killed Freeman and Waldo tonight and framed Mike Ryan for the job. You're mad. Am I? And you killed them, Alliston, because they were cutting themselves in on most of the dough you inherited from your uncle. Really? Uh-huh. You're beginning to interest me. Go on. Around last Christmas time, you didn't have your uncle's millions. You needed dough. And you figured that a good way to get it was to steal from your own business. So you staged a fake robbery. This is ridiculous. The police were thoroughly satisfied the robbery was no fake. Sure, you and Dan Freeman staged it so well. And your description of the thief was sure to result in Waldo's arrest. Uh, do I interest you? Go on. Well, to make it look good to the insurance companies, someone had to take a rap for a while. So Waldo was brought into the scheme. He made a confession that he'd robbed your safe after protecting himself with an alibi he never had to use. Your identification of him was just positive enough to hold him but so unpositive that a jury would acquit him. But these characters double-crossed you. Now they could send you to jail for conniving in the theft of your own insured property. And they're putting the screws on tight now, right? You seem to be doing the talking. All right, I'll go on. When it seemed certain that they'd take most of your new insurance in blackmail, your new inheritance, you watched for a chance to double-cross them. Mike Ryan's threats in court gave you that chance. And when you helped me keep him from socking Freeman and Waldo, you slipped his fountain pen out of his pocket. Later, you made the phone call that brought him to the neighborhood of Gliber's Cafe. You did a smart job, Alliston. Almost smart enough. And how would you attempt to prove this wild theory? You've heard about the dermal nitrate test, haven't you? Dermal nitrate test? Yeah, that establishes whether a man has fired a gun recently. Oh, oh, of course. Freeman and Waldo were shot less than four hours ago. The tests applied to the man who shot them would be conclusive. Shall I call the cops and ask them to test you? You said you came here for money. You're a blackmailer. Hmm. Another one, just like Freeman and Waldo, only wiser. Purely out of curiosity, how much do you want? $100,000. Hmm. You're most conservative. Which will it be? The money or the cops? Neither. Uh, oh. Why that gun? You're no smarter than Freeman and Waldo Casey. And I'm going to kill you, and too. And then what happens to you? This is my house. I surprise a prowler in my home and shoot him, as anyone has a right to do. And the shot I'll fire at you, Casey, will account for the result of any dermal nitrate test. So... <laughs> Nice shooting, Logan. You knocked the gun right out of his hand. Oh, gee, wait so long, Captain. I was afraid that uh, Casey... This guy would only have shot Casey if I hadn't got him first, Miss Williams. Well... My pal, Annie. <laughs> you, you were outside this window all the time, Captain? Uh-huh. 
Uh, there, Alliston, I put the bracelets on you nice and easy. There isn't a bruise on you or a bump. I'm going to take a picture of him, Logan. Yeah, that does it. Now no shyster lawyer will convince a jury that Alliston's confession before witnesses was gotten by way of anything but simple kindness. <laughs> We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. That 4th of July picnic or fishing trip tomorrow will be a lot more fun if it's topped off with a good cold bottle of beer. And be sure it's beer bottled in the convenient new Anchor Glass one-way no-deposit bottle. Light as a feather, compact as a watch, amazingly sturdy, these new bottles can be carried easily and safely anywhere. Yet, like ordinary bottles, they hold 12 full ounces. And best of all, Anchor Glass one-way bottles require no deposit, no return to the store. They're made to be thrown away once they've served their purpose. Of course, they're easy to open and safe to drink from. And most important of all, they bring you beer and ale protected by glass. Clean, sanitary glass. Glass that will never impart any foreign flavor. Glass that keeps beer and ale brewery bright. For enjoyable picnics, indoors or out, buy your favorite beer or ale in the new, more convenient Anchor Glass one-way bottle. Product of Anchor Hocking. The most famous name in glass. Mike Ryan's back on the force, huh, Casey? Naturally, Ethelbert. Mm-hmm. And reinstated, with apologies from the commissioner and Judge Lucas. There's a couple of things I still don't understand. Hmm? Why did me telling you about Waldo's alibi give you the big idea that... Ethelbert, when a crook gets into a jam, the first thing he pulls is an alibi. If he has one, that is. Well, Waldo had one, yet neither he nor his lawyer ever even mentioned it. No, there had to be a reason. Sure. The only reason must be that he wanted to be thought guilty of that robbery. Oh, which was covered by insurance. So they were trying to fool the insurance companies. That's right. And they'd have no point in doing that unless the insured person, Alliston, was in on the deal. And then knowing Alliston had inherited big dough, it was a sense to figure the blackmail angle. Oh, sure. The whole thing was perfectly simple. Yeah. Simplicity itself. Uh, Casey... There's a couple of things I still don't understand. Would you mind explaining that again? Uh, <clears throat> come on, Annie. This is where we came in. Good night, Ethelbert. Good night. Huh? Prime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation. Makers of Fire King Oven Glass. Anchor Glass Containers. Anchor Caps and Closures. All products of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. is directed by John Deets. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. This is Tony Marvin saying goodnight for the Anchor Hocking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town. So stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. (laughs) 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.